Okay, I think we are online on both Twitch and YouTube. Without any sound hiccups this time. I noticed, uh, I think, uh, the later half of the stream last time, the sound was off. I may have mistakenly turned off the microphone. Pay attention. So, but I'll do a quick recap of that uh, stream. Saturday stream for marketing. So, I want to divide up my time between game development and marketing. The difference is, uh, I would like to have manually curated scenes in Godot so I could uh, use the material for marketing purposes. So, Saturday was dedicated we played with the directional light settings to produce uh, decent shadows the way the models are imported from blank so in terms of game development there wasn't much done part of the directional light will contribute so we learned some stuff, but my the explanation part from Saturday's stream, I uh, think that happened mostly in the second half that is missing. So, but no worries because I'll be going over points again. I'll have to remember what I have done in this scene in slightly switch. But before Saturday, the uh, midweek streams last week were around UI topics, the way they covered the scene, and trouble with selection, or in this case, how Because the plan was to move 3D scene along the game area respecting the coordinate system of have some kind of preview and click of a button the instance of that placed and we were simulating uh users players uh buy or placement mechanics so normally this buy button will open an interface I will pretend this buy button is uh, this menu in essence is very similar to the equipment items will be done so if this was a shovel or raised bed uh, just buy and place it so in this case that's actually good enough later we'll actually bind uh, some other uh, interface because uh, well you want to buy this item but from different manufacturers maybe let's pretend that you bought it and now uh, i think what we can do is to uh, place some kind of close button logic for these panels because uh, when we click between these two panels um only one of them is visible, but we have no way of closing it. Should either close it when we click buy, or maybe when we click outside or right click. Putting an X button here to close, uh, we seem a bit we cluttered the interface. Maybe we'll right click. We we'll actually do that. Let's see. So, where we should write it uh, of code is an important decision because we were also discovering that, which is uh, how we handle camera events with the mouse wheel, mouse moving track.
just just to recap when we have this list now i'm freely uh, able to roll it and down but we before we turned off the camera control when we scroll this list it was also zooming the camera in in and out so everything seems to be working fine except the we, we this zoom is actually okay but i think there are some other parts where there is going to be some kind of collusion So say when the player right click do we mean that we want to close this panel there might be another interface open to you maybe create some kind of stack they're holding which interface has been open. so we could um Write it in the game script because there are some similar uh, functions in camera script, but this is only uh, sounds more like a game. Go into don't think mouse click. to house right click event section We want to close close something. We will probably need high level structure to check of which panels are open shoulder. Let's look at our single. We have event pass where we could trigger this event. Say which uh, panel from that stack. As if we need a new script. Let's call it UI stack. This stack stack will um I believe we could at stack of UI what we are trying to do is push that pushes the method we want to put stuff in the array so where do we want to put it to the prompt or This could be first in, first out, last in. Think of an elevator. The last person that is in, first person out. So that's like one way of doing a stack. But if if you are um, if you're lining up, you are at the beginning of a line, 
while you were the first in, so you'll be first out. So you'll be priority. I think I'll push it to the back. This way, the last item array will be the last item. And this is actually always going to pop the last. You don't need to know the position, not going to. Unless this may be needed or not, I don't know. Hypothetically, we have three screens open, and only one of them has close button. It just happens that that second interface with the close button is really the second item once we close it then we have to find that uh, why in this just out of curiosity any ray can we remove position it's all about finding the when we Remove the position, not filling it with now. Array. Remove an element from the array by index. Index doesn't exist in the array, nothing. When we get to this point, if we ever need it, I'll double check once we remove the element from that index whether the array size is or do we have Let's see. We may never need that. So I believe we spent fast. That let's script to our stack. We need a new signal group, which is why we do it UI push. So, uh, with similar uh, array, when the player opens. Add player operator. When the player opens the equipment for planting, let's look at the way we are actually signal equipment panel. This is the planting. Wait a minute. Oh, I think I bound the same uh, same planting panel, both panels here, but equipment panel will be pulling its own JSON file. We're um, we were planning to have two distinct uh, things with just two icons. They're different, so that part. But the script that's pulling data is the same. There. However, press buttons go. Add equipment their operation. These two buttons are right here. So when equipment panel is open, if there are any other panels open there, it closes them. And uh, it only opens the equipment panel and the same goes for the 
planting can always no longer needed. This was when both were handled in Italy. We know when a panel is open, we need to pass the panel name Vent Bus. What do we want to put? Want to put? Um, so this will pass the call to event bus and event bus should now, well, UI state should now bus. When UI push happens, call step uh, like this. Then the UI will be passed from. Similarly, game script, when this thing happens, event bus should also signal that it's going to do high pop. When UI pop happens, it's always going to control that. It is similar to this. I may change this name to pop. This one. Too. So I think right now everything may be before. When we hit this, equipment panel string should be Y stack. Vector stack equipment panel is in there. Uh -huh. So, one thing I didn't explore is the fact that when I open planting, we will have planting panel edit as a array index one. Instead, equipment panel will still be kept in index zero is a problem because although we own one panel here, in the data structure we think there are actually two. but in reality only one of them add equipment will be false which is because we just click planting Planting panel will pro. Um, so, right here, when we are hiding all the panel, Should also be sending a signal to close the pop the last uh, file. Do this. But first, so here's the equipment panel. When we click planting, this equipment go away zero. 
No, we can't. We can. And now that looks okay. Only thing is, right click. This array will be popped. It's correct, but usually we don't. It's happening. So when this happens from within the game screen, then tells UI stack to this guy doesn't tell the UI component to. Now I might do this. If I find this um, hide UI logic specifically for player operation, it won't be generic enough other UI screens that we'll have it. So what I can do is this instead of this this script extending from control maybe uh create a UI Just to generate Y, which extends from control. That this is control going to hide method. Actually, because control has built in hide, this is just you are this guy now. Get some this way. Stands can be actually. Now we have to access this script from because when game script says well pop but which one is pop somehow no you know what so it says if instead of having a generic pop you should have a targeted we know exactly which item. We know that item. That's that might be our reference. So we could maybe find that game. Once we find that game object, that will be extending from a UI script, which will have a hide method. So then we could uh, even do something like well, whatever we are popping. Could actually do something like this within the stack. This kind of the UI. So this UI actually will be the index. Will actually. Whatever, well, before we do this, this 
instead of seeing the string name. Okay, I think we can because we are already using that. Go and hide. We are not passing the object reference string string value. And when we do want to pop, we want to pop this which is the index, but uh, not really, it's still the object. In this case, it will work because it, there is only two. There are two panels, and because only one is open in the UI stack, there will always be one. So it's as if it's always zero. Uh, but I want to write this generic enough that when we have multiple screens, every right click is going to close the the uh, last uh, opened. Panel. I might be abusing this. I might make this more abstract. Because even this this uh, logic here, closing these panels, it, it looks like it's custom written for these two buttons. Like open. so, it may, even opening and closing should be abstract. That it should not be labeled as. Or at the very least, that player operation script should not be attached to uh, this node, this these two buttons, the higher level. So it kind of becomes an architecture problem at this point. So I think we have viewer on Twitch. So hello to you. If you have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. I hope I won't miss the questions. I'm keeping the screen. Be happy to answer. we kind of have something in this Yeah, this is looking more and more. Because what if UI stack had a dictionary? Possible path. instead of hard coding this in the specific key, these references would be passed to UI stack keep track of uh, variable names, meaning from the game's point of view, we know there will only be one equipment. This is the variable name with which we track. This is just a game to store that game object. So whether this panel is open or not could be called by my stack single. Does not need done by a custom script attached to group of because then I'm gonna end up writing something like this for a different set of panels. Especially if you think about the fact that our fireworks.
we will have different buttons. In this case, inventory will yeah open pop up and pretty much yeah all these buttons will come up with whether they cover the full screen or not it they have to open the control node the node that is extending it I think it's making more sense. So I'm going to take a, a short break. I think something. We just hit a point where we need to uh, take this custom solution. These two panels attached to these two buttons. This custom solution, and make that uh, a generic enough solution. That the closing and opening panels should be controlled through a high level script. And that way, wherever the buttons are, they can eat through any reference. Right now, this is too custom to display operation. It is pretty much happening in around those two buttons. So, to um, Highly or strictly coupled. We should have them more uh, loosely coupled. Um, I'll be back soon.
Okay. Empty. Building up. Human the drinkable. I'll uh, finish my uh, coffee from morning. Cold, but it's tasty. In the meantime, I think I thought of a solution it's to, yeah, uh, move, move some of this logic into UI stack. Um, you could even have methods here. Say, it's always about adding to this. One panel is open. Equipment panel. In order to open it, when we click the equipment button, it should add the equipment panel to the stack. It should um, first have the reference to the hidden equipment panel to turn it on. But when we click the equipment button again, we should not try to open the panel again. The show method will work just fine because it's going to be like, well, show the panel that is already visible. That's no problem. That's but adding the reference of newly opening panel into the UI stack will add the same item twice into the stack. So this is where we should protect uh, against that kind of. So it says that when we do trigger this add to stack, we should first check if UI already exists in the stack. Otherwise, ignore it. Sorry, if it exists, ignore it. Otherwise, push it to the stack. Because uh, trying to show the same thing that is already open is going to cause a kind of visible problem, but this is a duplicate. And that way we could um, decouple player operations uh, I mean heck this is even gonna go away and it's gonna sound more and more like panel operation which is going to be so we just need to know this uh, whether I keep this reference here it's these uh, the UI stack or should the UI stack know these? Might be okay to keep uh, this kind of low level reference. Just to move all this into UI stack, this path is going to be very long and maybe difficult to find because when the game is running player operations right the script is part of this part of HUD uh, and which is part of game but essentially this is all physical node UI stack is a single thing. at some point we are writing these uh, references into UI stack it says if it has to know of some thing kind of like it has to go out to the game trickle down and then find the reference. <laughs> instead of doing a work like that because that's kind of like checking the references uh, any kind of finding Finding a node will, will always keep the engine busy. But instead, if you keep those references inside the node where they are already part of the game physical structure, they just pass themselves to the UI stack, just basically letting it know, you know I want to be opened, I want to be closed, I think. In terms of
Yeah, maybe we'll just move. These two are. Right now, I say I. It's actually passing a streak. Because cannot pass. Uh, It's looking Let's see can crack the code here. Better remove it after you hide it because if you remove the item longer, you could actually do it this way because it's referenced already. This should also work. We don't know. We're already doing it. Oh, player operation. When we want to close it, when I wrote this, I had multiple buttons one like more than two buttons naturally when each button was supposed to open its own panel it made sense to run a for loop close all the panels six to only keep one open it's as if
part of me wants to keep this in case we have more than but now that we have only two it's as if only when equipment panel is requested it should actually trigger the close the high the creation of planting panel vice versa And I don't think we are checking against problem where we want to pop the UI. I, I don't think it's actually critical enough that it will crash the game. But when Yeah, returns now if the array is empty without printing. And in the case of remove, we kind of want to find it. If the index doesn't exist, nothing happens. Okay, so it's kind of error free. So if you do this initially and if there's nothing to pop, it'll just. When we do the UI pop, which is removed from stack, we need an index, we find the index based on the UI panel itself. The UI panel is going to hide itself and basically it's going to remove itself stack. This is essentially the same thing as this. So this way I can always clean it up. So let's double check when we do want to show I think we could also do the show thing because showing and hiding is now handled in UI stack this when we do the UI pop up we are actually doing the hide by pop uh, band handler and similarly, this show will happen. Whichever one we are pushing, which is essentially that UI showing itself. That way, the UI operations is in the UI stack, singleton. And this is only for figuring, the, figuring what the player wants to do with the through two buttons and these references are just going to be kept here to notify the UI stack this might just work um, this is moving in the right direction and because this is this is kind of redundant right now because we could have extended this from control which has a hide method so we might have to go back to that simple So UI stack inspector, let's refresh it. Ray size is zero. So hit equipment. Ray size one, size one. Here's the object. This object is is as you can see the path here. Is the equipment path. So we have something nice going on. Okay, go back to the UI stack. When I click the planting button, it should always keep one item in the array. Yeah, because it's going to close. That's how I wrote the logic here. Let's go back. It's a size one object, but this time it should say, I can click it, planting panel. And it's the planting. So it's opening only one. You can also check in uh, here, say, uh, this is planting panel, equipment panel, visible should say false. 
is not checked and planting panel visible should be on. So this is working. Working beautifully. Now to truly test this, we need a third panel. But the whole point of doing this was to test the right click. To see, to basically close the last item in stack. Let's test it. So in game, right click is going to pop. The main difference here is this. When we trigger UI pop, it is pretty much like this, but there is no UI passed. We should now we have two two options here. We will either rename this UI pop to UI remove to go along with this uh, remove from stack and this remove method of array so that UI pop only means the last element. So we'll have three signals total. Or write some kind of if here that if the argument is empty, then you, instead of removing um, a specific item, we are actually popping it. So we kind of overload the meaning. Uh, UI pop. Let's do it the lazy way. Let's do if is if UI is null, or in this case if UI exists, we do this. It's else. Then uh, we want to do. Uh, We still want to hide the UI in either case. But what is our UI here? Which is uh, stack's last item. But we want to first uh, pop that. No, we want to pop the item last thing, but we want to access that item, last item. When we do find last, it's is still looking for a value. So this is actually giving you front, I think last should give you. It's going to give you the last. That's the last element. In center and returns, there is empty. This is where we have to, because if the player keeps pressing the right button and there's nothing left in the stack, we are essentially always accessing the back, the last element, which is not there. Okay, this is the only exception I think, compared to the other uh, methods where the element didn't exist but didn't necessarily trigger an error. So we should do something like this. Another if check. Our last UI is this. If this exists, then you'll remove it from from the stack, but also you will hide it. Let's run this. So this should not give any error, right click, because I bet if I remove that if case, it is going to pop a lot of errors. Equipment, right click, uh -uh, something didn't quite work. Let's see we are even getting here. We did not even trigger this. Game UI pop image signal. Do you even get here? 
I'm, I have this weird suspicion. Does this even happen? It does. All you have to do is to emit a signal. Just with basic symbol. Signal. And it should come down here. And then one of these two things should happen. remove let it go the game is not paused therefore right click should let's uh, run again right click is not doing anything So right click gets here. This should fire. And yet it doesn't. Right click, stop here, and this is all, this is not firing. Question number one. If we are claiming that it's not firing, is it because it is no longer past an argument, which is something we are checking? If I let this go, it should normally stop here. It does not. So far, everything looks very promising. The logic seems okay, but we are not able to. And yet, when we trigger it from here, it is okay. 
because we are trying to trigger this from here so let it go so you'll stop here so you are trying to hide a y element it's okay we're just kind of trying to hide something that is already hidden that's fine then we come back for the second look let this go again so I, don't, I know that this is working so fine the equipment is now open if i hit planting we are going to try to hide equipment and planting and then it, it, it's going to try to trigger uh, at the step for the planting run once twice and now planting is that's good <laughs> so when I hit planting again, even though it's open, it's going to try to hide equipment and planting again, only to reopen planting. So although it's a bit redundant logic wise, it's working. This last part is what we want to try when I right click the game area, which should trigger this, should trigger this else part because when I right click, I want to exactly know which UI is the last opened. UI stack is keeping track of that. So when the game script is sending this signal to UI stack, UI stack should know which uh, last item, which last item should be closed. This is where it's supposed to do that job. So the R assumption is. Should I really check for a null case? Of course, it's not like it's like this. Open panel is open. Right click. No. Sorry, the other way around. If it's not now, then you should. Although that's fine. So in the player operations case, we are always passing something. This is where we have the, where we have that. This is going to sound a bit bizarre, but what if I just pass now? So then when it's explicit and when it's null, which is the else case. Um, that works. I was hoping I wouldn't have to pass uh, null explicitly. But what the fuck. So right clicking anywhere in the game screen will close the last uh, opened um, panel. So we have these two cases, which is whichever button is 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 triggered, it closes the other uh, open panel, and wherever we right click, it actually cl closes the last open panel. Right now we have only two panels; it doesn't matter. But I'm hoping once I have more panels open, every right click will open the last uh, clicked panel. Additionally. If some panels have a close button, once we click that, it will actually remove that uh, in the correct place from the stack. So that way, if we have like, say, three panels, we have one, two, three panels, and we want to close the second panel because that one has a close button, then our array will have one and third panels in the stack. So then right click will close the third panel and then another right click will close the first panel. So that way we could actually remove panels uh, 
within the stack and kind of keep the order. This is gonna satisfy that these two things. Okay, so this was a little bit um, anticlimactic to pass this null. I was hoping I would get away without doing it, but uh, it is what it is. Of course, we are still doing all this work, so we are. Uh, closer to the target here that when we hit the buy button in the simulated uh, operation that we actually position a uh, preview 3d item go on Before I do that, I'm going to go into planting panel, it's 2D. These two guys should not always be busy. Let's take care of the two. Good con. I, I could pick a decent group name for this and this whole structure. For now, I think I'll keep it. So, this planting panel should have this explanation part showing something generic when there is no selection. While the player is filtering uh, the type of plant and the variety, they should be seeing some basic instructions like pick something that these two items but only be visible when there is so initially the explanation title description I think I could have uh, maybe instruction there like messing with the the value of the Ask me. Could either be explanation shown or production could be role. Productions say we'll have a label. The label should say some friendly text because this is the planting panel. We should pick a sentence that encourages the player to uh, plant some. What do you want to grow today? All the font and everything will. Later, but let's do size flag. There is nowhere to expand. So do up one center custom font styles. I Yeah, that's a different comp. Trying to adjust the font size, but I think I. Wasn't there. Um... Maybe I always work with uh, custom. Supposed to see the fonts. Uh... But I guess I always yeah, I imported some. Let's pretend I'm. Of course, now I have to assign the. 
Do I even have phones? I'll quickly import something. So Let's go to the phones directory. F. I might have source on pro. Go to the project folder, work, for the whole so source sample. Here's the font data, load, hold. So, G. When a cell is selected, this is where we do the branching. When we want to explain our cell, which is bringing the seed information, this is when we do turn on the explanation. We want to hide. Maybe hide it before we show. When we first open this tree comp, uh, I mean this planting panel, when we initialize it, we could maybe get away with this. Doing it like what do you want to grow today? I want to grow super Italian pig. It's like now when you are looking for something else, it is okay if this stays. Because we also have cell selected triggering uh, for these uh headers. But uh, would be kind of weird to. I'm expanding potato. Let's not change this uh, area back. Maybe they will change their mind midway through. Oh, I was going for potato, but whatever. Maybe they close them in. Equipment again, it's empty. Kind of empty here. This equipment panel is a duplicate. Except uh, there's two buttons here. It's more or less the same structure. It doesn't have this third button. And uh, maybe uh, this structure will also change too because. It makes sense to see uh, maturity formation for seeds, but this kind of uh, label structure or the, the node structure hierarchy will be different for equipment. Maybe we'll write durability. Some other type of thing, whatever is relevant to shovels, buckets. That they may look the same, but. Uh, Changed. The only thing that is going to be maybe same here is uh, this instructions. So unfortunately in Godot we cannot copy nodes between seeds. We could save this as a seed. So then we replace these two guys with that new scene, part of this planting panel. 
So we could actually load this into equipment. But then the text will be different. Data control here, similar work. Let's create a label. So will be. So here label here. Label will be top. Top wide. Good. Um. Now, sometime in the near future, week or so, I might create a theme because I don't want to assign font information to a single label. I could even do that actually here. During the whole theme, maybe I could just do the labels. All labels will. If I, if I end up doing this the third time today, I think I'm going to. For the label. And here the player is looking for equipment. This could be as simple as a bucket, a shovel, or a raised bed. Something like this. Will be done. Well, it's essentially the same equipment. I am actually using the script. This should actually have its own equipment PD that pulls only the equipment. Uh, right now, I'm Using the same plant data to build the equipment. So this is actually okay. What tickles your fancy today? Fine. Except with the choice of those. We are getting. Oh, I happen to click this in the super Italian paste. I... Minor boot. Although the data is the same, the hierarchy is the same. That's fine. It'll all change. And we are getting one step closer to. Hitting this button and closing this menu. Start showing a preview of this tomato plant in the game world. Step closer to And I think the fact that I um, made the UI um, management through a central location, hitting this button will send a signal to the UI stack. It's going to say, I belong to this uh, panel, close that panel. And Course, then we have to trigger some of the for this. Let's go with the bricks button. When you are clicked, There you go. You know, I'm actually going to label this.
because that shit hits the pack. Also, it makes much more sense to have everything turned on here so I can actually select. But it would be extremely awkward to remember those these uh, before we build the game. I think in this script here, I'm ready. I'm going to trigger the pause event so that there is no. So this is going to force the explanation to be closed and instructions to be shown in case I actually hide the instructions in view in Godot. Says maybe we'll get in the way. Selecting notes in the that is fine. Now, this buy button. See, right now it's already happening. Instructions is covering the buy button. I'm going to, I'm going to click this. Call this button buy button. Maybe this should also be in. This is going to check whether we already own some tomato seeds. So here now, press on by pressed our action planting pack. We first do plant bus signal do you want to pop whatever you want to pop we want to pop ourselves sounds kinky want to call function go in Path is when you are ready, this note that this is okay. All in on and all. But when this is triggered, these nodes are ready. There is no problem in it. This is ready and somehow.
And it can't be because it's hidden. The whole point of showing and hiding stuff. One not to be ready so you can show it. Do this because this tree variable will be accessed right when ready is triggered. So if we don't do it, and this is essentially this like if you don't write already here, bar tree. But when we, then we have to do this like p equals this. the fact that this could be accessed can really this that every child knows is pretty so. I'm going to restart the because this seems like a stuck this null instance why should it be so let's look under oh it might be giving that error in equipment not exactly script is playing that is the one that but the same script we use in both yeah Godot is right in the planting panel why the control that holds that label that instructs the user is called instruction when I created this here this label is called so when the same script is also managing instructions node, of course it can. It's now the door was right. So now whatever I do here, uh, here we go to do some visual control. This is more convenient, but it is going to fix itself when we game. And correct one. Also, when I hit buy button here, it will automatically close that panel itself. So now, when I look under remote, buy stack, my stack should be zero. Well. Okay, now what do we what do we do with buy button? I want to show a preview of the model. Whatever we selected. In this case, it could just be a dummy model. I don't care. There might be a better way of doing this, but what comes to my mind?
a node that is otherwise but holding placeholder that will swap itself to the model we want to show you all. So let's actually use sample. Is this mesh instance this cube? What if this cube was hidden? And let's not call this mesh instance. Let's call this uh, preview. This preview. This might have to be made special uh, code, and we'll we'll relabel the special node uh, to preview. Then we will rename this preview to mesh. Back to mesh, because we'll swap this mesh with the mesh we want to preview. And maybe this structure may stay more or less the same, but without the script. The script is now doing the interactable thing. Let me undo this. We had a dummy sphere here, maybe. Here's a preview, the main node. Pull it up. And uh, let's call this model. That way I can do preview model mesh. Um, right now, Funny looking sphere. There's no material. Uh, red. And maybe I'll uh, create some kind of uh, shader or material that actually shows this transparency. That will be like the preview. Sort of a uh, help a uh, sort of transparent see through. Let's see, this is where uh, Godot is doing that uh, camera view. I think it's because this one has that um, outline shader that. It We don't need that. So I believe game script can be passed event. Something like hey, we want to preview something. Could create a new uh, signal group here. I know it's a game related thing. Game can be paused, and resume, but this is more like a player operation. Um, the player may want to buy something, sell something, place something. So this uh, this sounds more like a player. But then everything player does is with items, with entity. So it is as if this is an entity preview. 
Because then everything is about game and player and whatever stuff. Well, that's too uh, vague, too generic. More specific you can be, the better you'll be able to separate scripts and notes and creating scenes. Because then you, you may just write one big ass uh, script, thousands of lines, because that's the whole game, right? Just to the whole appreciation. But, because you can, signal entity preview. That is good enough. Now, when we go into game, even this might change. But I'm thinking this game is going to be responsive. Now, we could actually put this logic in sample level script because that is actually, that makes more sense because. Uh, this game may have scenario based uh, gameplay. So then levels will be basically map. So you may have a bigger house, smaller house, little yard, that kind of thing. So then the level itself will have a preview object in it. And it manages that preview model mesh. Through the yes, it, it I'm still I, I say the right thing, but I'm actually writing it wrong place. Sample level is going to be in groundkeeper script. Now this is a very 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 early uh, script, groundkeeper. This was to create a grid procedurally. As a, it's actually doing its job. It's basic structure here. Uh, this will most likely be assigned to this grid map as its own script. Yeah, there's going to be a whole other like level construction. This this will probably be labeled as. Uh, Level BD going to be generic enough to create uh, the level construction from some kind of rule. For now, let's keep on keep or let's just label it level so it's a bit future. You actually doesn't comply with the. Naming conventions, level GD. Here it is, level GD. Everything is. <laughs> Cyclic, close, run. In ready, we need to uh, connect to the event bus. We are connecting to Entity Preview. What happens? The preview happens. Let's create a new function on Entity Preview. String. Where the preview map. Preview model Oops, not that This guy will have a mesh This is probably where we have to pass the reference to So we could do the mesh Construction Most simple way is that we pass the mesh so we'll pass the reference string, string name, because it's going to be a path, some resource. We have to read from that. I think I'm keeping them under assets. This is still something I'm deciding on because. 
The scene, it's, the scene itself is constructed directly from the model. But then the scene may have other things in it, not just the model mesh itself. Let's pretend we are always showing eggplant. That's the one we have the most. Yeah, this already looks like just the model, but plus something, plus something that it's the, the model itself, the mesh is first held of special node, special node. So when I read this file, Yeah, and depending on the model, if there is going to be interaction with most likely each one of these uh, vegetable scenes will have its own script that actually handles some custom data work. So I need to figure out a way to expose the mesh itself to an outside script. So say eggplant knows which uh, model which prediction. So this is going to inherit from uh, now there is something called interactable which uh handles the user selection of that is necessary as well the big uh, architecture this Sometimes these decisions are made, they change organically, they uh, may have decision right now and as I'm more informed I change that. There is a good sense of progress.
like the way we handle device started off as a custom solution for those two buttons and panel. I'm, I'm thinking we may eventually come to a more abstract way of handling all these operations. It comes to model preview. So there is a clear path doing that. Why not hand? Of course, because when you implement the most abstract way, it's wrong anyway because it's not easy to see the rules. Start with the concrete way and then you just make it more and more. It may seem like the wrong decision in the first place, but it is natural for uh, you know human beings to start with the. Give you more our level will have a preview special model. We are trying to alter them. Let's start with the dumbest way possible. Let's say we have a hard coded. He loaded eggplant. It is the eggplant. It just happens that this eggplant, first child, please get the children. Do you even know what you are? Uh, act scene. Here a packed scene. Expected end of statement. Dot. Um. I'm doing the preload, so I don't. I can't do already. There's nothing I can ref. The problem is. It is. Yeah, duh. Stop the. You have eight children. But you kind of should. Without having an instance, how can mistake be the instance actually going to be? Do the get child. This is when I'm going to temporarily initiate 
instantiate a model. So this will be kept in the memory. I have to free that. So the get child is zero, which is essentially going to give us the right. Now we may have to create a script that is generic enough that always outputs this so that uh, regardless of the path, node structure here, this guy doesn't need to know which child it has right now. This guy's mesh should be the preview models. Also, naturally, the sample level we need to show this model. We need to change its position based on mouse position, which is something we try to implement. First, let's do the. This has to be closed. Over you. When I do planting, this uh, I should have had the preview. I should have had the preview show, not the model. Model is updated, but. Again. Nothing is here, so there's a hidden preview game object there. We choose buy. Is this even called? Entity preview. And plus when we do the buy, let's check this in favor operation. Not play replace. Planting panel. Planting panel. Yeah, we are not actually starting the preview. Event bus emits signals. There's nothing to preview, then what can you do? Because we are hard coding what mesh we want to preview, we are not passing which object we want to preview at this level. That is fine. Planting tomato super Italian paste by this is when we were really supposed to this thing. Can you emit the signal? That signal should be code Yes, this is not happening. Let's see if we are even coming. We are not. Um, oh, I think this is the same problem we had before when we were passing an L argument to the signal. Because this signal is expecting a mesh. Which is going to be the the mesh, the, whatever entity we want to pre, but we don't want to pass it right now, so it's not. Let's pretend we are actually passing, okay, so that the function is, because we are actually ignoring that, we are hard coding it. Okay, the fact that we got here is good news. I'm going to remove the breakpoint, let it go. We should actually see an eggplant here. That's a giant ass eggplant stem. Uh, the scale is way off, but I think we have a success case. So for uh, people who just joined us, our goal is to simulate player operations such as buying or placing objects in the game world. We are uh, cutting this process short here. Instead of selecting something from your inventory, we are abusing this buy button as if you are placing that item in the scene right away. We are keeping uh, a hidden preview node here. 
we are going to change the mesh instead of having uh, this sphere this default sphere we are going to change them with the proper model and that proper model in our case is a hard-coded eggplant model but its scale is way off so that's why you the big stem okay this is the eggplant's stem because it's just too big Not quite sure if it's actually that's something I have to figure out between uh, Blender and Godot that workflow. Maybe I actually messed it up during import. Either likely. Under normal conditions, I wouldn't want to touch any. Say it's one. It's like one. Let's put it here, maybe blender. I can put it. Uh, speaking of which, the agency that is doing the three D work for me has sent beans, peas, and a bag of dirt mold. So let's check those. We will have a good idea of what the scale is. Got to fix the file references. There's some uh, folder mismatch. And actually, normally fixing it once does it, but sometimes. So this is a fully grown fruit bearing it's, uh, when it's seedling then it's a leaf like this but i think this is where we can already see so this little guy is essentially a meter tall. when this is in inside godot it's huge but when I did my uh, other models, they were relatively scaled, I think, more or less how tall a tree is supposed to be. This wheelbarrow is also the same as so I imported. Yeah. So I bet if we import this uh, these seedling, it will look huge. Now, this is only a seedling. When it's growing, then that's two meters. Then we have the case of fully grown, it's flowering, it's not bearing any fruit. That's almost four meters if you stop. Then we have the fully grown fruit bearing, but it's not ripe yet. Check the six meter, huge. Then finally, we have the ripe station. And this bad boy is 11 meters, it's huge. And in the withered case, of course, it's shrinking a bit. We have a sample trellis here to see how. Look with the oh in and around. So that's actually looking good. So we definitely need to figure out the whole scaling. This this is peas. They sent uh, beans. Um, I think it is going to be similar enough, but uh, I believe we decided to have different color for them. otherwise they would look too similar to Let's 
So it's uh, Romano beans or red beans. We have a disconnect. I'll have to check it with them. I think between this model and this model, the leaf shape is similar enough, but I think, uh, yeah, this has more uh, detail here. But it's, it's good, so it's clear that one is. Mm, still the same scale uh, issue here, 11 meters. Yeah, I think the designer here chose to uh, duplicate the model. That's it. Because we are doing this work for demo. We may have to refine these models later. Still so much to do. Okay. Not time. It's not the right time to be. Unripe case. Flowering. I'll just leave it there. Uh, this sky space color yeah. well if this plant is too tall then this trellis is yeah it's uh 14 meters tall this is like Six-story building, five-story building. It's huge. Yeah, and actually, you can't see it from the scale too. You have to zero in the scale wheel. Save. They said they bag of dirt. I'm looking at the list of models. Um, where might where might they have? Burlap. Discuss. Let's open this zip file. It's actually a bag of dirt. I'll just drag. All right. It's purple. Something that's kind of bugging me here. Art style wise. I understand what he tried to do. It's this. Uh, you have a build bag. Maybe we'll add one more uh, segment. Because upside down, this almost looks like some uh, cartoon character. Here's. Side down. Could easily make this dirt the color is fine. We have the burlap bag. Maybe we'll give some kind of noise texture to burlap uh, crisscross uh, the woven uh, texture. This is actually looking good. Um, height wise. This is two meters tall. The go up there would be me. Oh. Because anything that, that is two meters tall full of dirt, you wouldn't be able to carry it on. But it's good. It's so today's uh Wednesday. Tomorrow we'll have 
We might have another day of game do. Saturday is marketing. I might be using these assets to create a scene manually. But who knows if we could pull off this preview uh, logic. We might give the player a way to um, place these objects in the game world. So they should have a playable version. That may not be pretty enough for marketing purposes, but we might be doing more practical work than we had imagined. this let's follow close this step good we may what else can we do I might also have a lunch because with besides the short break I think I've been in Doing this for two hours. I would like to have um, some insight into why this skill. The fact that the skill here is three percent. I want to re-import the egg with proper scale plan. Did I even... I remember scaling this as tall as a meat. Because I was doing the marketing work, this eggplant. Let's look at it. Here, the scale is one. Here's an eggplant. Meter tall, that's one. Here's a raised bed corner. And it makes much more sense that the scale is, it, it is what it is. That's fine. We go into the scene, look at the raised bed corner. That's also okay too. Now, as far as I know, this one unit is a metering. So it's like, you know, 40 centimeters. That kind of all checks out. And here, um, kind of hard to know from projection, but. Uh, it's still good enough. This height is as long as this unit. So it's one meter, pretty much like we see. So, let's check. Eggplant model in this scene. Is essentially a meter tall, but when we import it in game, it looks huge. Only explanation here is this.
Health loads. Kind of or quietly here. I know that these cubes are the default cube. They are two by two. So if this eggplant is supposed to be a meter tall, it should be as tall as the top of the cube. So when it's imported into the sample level, for some reason it is the Let's try remote. In the remote view, we have sample level preview. This preview has all the scale information as one. Model. Everything is one. Besides its placement, which is not important. Not that we are trying to change this map with the eggplant map. Come here, we hit planting, hit tomato, super Italian paste, buy. I'm going to pause the game so that the sun doesn't move. Let's see what we are looking at. Now, preview. Everything is still one. Here is the mesh. It's the stalk of the eggplant. Everything here looks the same. Green. Except everything is so big. I have more questions. I have zoom function. It's fine. Anyway, I'm noticing something else too. So here we have a panel that is invisible. It's hidden. When I'm doing the mouse up, it's supposed to zoom in. It's blocked by that. Just like we had the invisible thing that did not let us select stuff in. See. I have diff I have more uh, UI uh, versus game objects uh, control problem. See, so when I'm zooming out, is this some kind of camera clipping that I'm not able to see a certain height? Is that it? I think that's it because when I'm moving the world view forward, the mouse, I'm seeing uh, less of the stock. So when I'm actually doing this way, seeing more of the stock. So let's rotate the camera. It's actually cutting it off. Let's actually go this view so you see it's as if it's growing, pulling the camera. This might have something to do with that. Uh, Local camera. Not in sample. Camera. Here's the camera. Here, this. Here's the file. Let me get into. Here is uh, changing, but not as much as I, I. I don't think this will be an issue once the eggplant is correctly scaled. This is something we might actually it's clipping. Because when the camera is further out and the top of the buildings, we don't want stuff to clutter. But then, there's so much to decide here. Here. 
It's also cut off. <laughs> No, I know why this this cube is extending below the plane here. That's why you get the bottom part of the cube. But why it's cut off like this is and another question, why is this not why is this ground not exactly extending bottom of the even in the normal mode I It kind of does, but as soon as you, oh, it's sort of. This might be because maybe I placed it. It might be. I find it unlikely though, because from the center it's going fifteen. Leave the center. Well, here, example. You actually do 10 by 10, so it's actually some kind. Size. Oh, we have this hypothesis. Nope. Not really. Sample. This is actually created grid map. Why even this? So this is irrelevant. I believe I'm actually in the game. But that is again large enough. When my camera is here, zooming out. Doesn't make The way we are looking, I dis I remember disabling the way we are looking. Sent doesn't seem. Here's a zero zero. We are kind of looking at this area. But then I think as soon as the camera kicks in, there is the script here doing move camera to target, target code. So that is it. Because in this script, you can actually do this. Uh, camera will be zero, zero, and we'll Self. Um, it's, it's actually trying to do it not like will you stand exit zero then. So see, there is actually room. I'm moving the camera down. I mean, uh, I'm stating it in the position. So when I zoom out, there's that uh, layer. See, when 
I think this is that clipping. Bar clip. Yeah, when I decrease the far, it's actually cutting off part. So then it's the new. When it's zero zero five, it's too little. Let's make it smaller. Zero zero. It actually did change it, but we were so slightly. Almost not. So this near clipping is. Relative to its local Z axis. So let me show you the effect. When it's one, it's here. It's approaching zero, it's actually. Let's make it 10. It's going to go even further up. So we want this to be done. But no matter what I do, even if it's zero, flipping, then it's still not good enough. I think I kind of know why, because the explanation here says that uh, it's relative to its local z-axis. I think this camera is, by z, I, it doesn't mean the z in the world, but so in this case, the camera is actually 10, uh, 10 pixels up in the air. This is maybe too low. Pivot here is actually it's what the game script controls. I wanted these values to make this 50. Let's see if there is so the camera was a bit uh, too low, which explains this relative to near. Uh, near really which is here the, the y axis uh, punch break It seems like lunchtime, so there will be another stream later in the afternoon. So we'll continue with the scale problem and the cameras clipping the near uh, Rostov.